Welcome back to our newest episode of the Time Podcast. Today, I have Matt Lewis with me. Matt, welcome on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Timo. I'm actually super excited to hear about you because we haven't met in person. So all I'll ask you today is also news for me. So I'm audience as well as podcast today, which is always exciting. Great. Matt, let's jump straight into it. Um, you mentioned uh, in our little pre-chat that um, you had your last touching points with time about uh, 10 years ago um, when you were 20. And <laughs> Bless um, you. <laughs> do what I can, right? <laughs> <laughs> so lots has changed, obviously, and I'm very keen to hear what has happened for you in between. Um, but before we um, before we talk about time and, and mentoring, um, I want to talk about travel a little bit. And I'm um, especially interested now that borders are back open. You know, do you have like a, a bucket list for destinations or a travel bucket list that you that you work your way through? My bucket list is always so large, probably like everybody in the travel industry. It's always got new and weird, uh, wonderful places on it. I'm now keeping a list of all of the places I think people don't go often enough. And they're the places that I want to go to. All of the, the, the stands and, you know, some of the, the lesser visited countries that are, that are less uh, popular, I guess. Do we have a specific example that you can share? Don't say Germany now, otherwise I'm upset. <laughs> well, no, there's, uh, I guess, as you know, with the current state of the world at the moment, who knows where we can travel to uh, next. But uh, no, look, there's there's lots of them. I think uh, when I, I'm a Eurovision fan, right? So always when something like uh, Azerbaijan or something comes up, I go, yeah, I really must do uh, some of those countries. Mm -hmm. And when you travel, uh, especially if you travel to maybe remote areas or where, you know, the, the natural environment is a bit more of the focus, you probably would need a bit of a different approach when it comes to packing your luggage. Any professional expert luggage tip that you can share? Uh, travel light. So I've just spent the last, uh, pre-COVID, the last seven years as a digital nomad mm -hmm. and lived basically out of a suitcase. So I think... Uh, you don't need much to be happy and to be comfortable. I think one of the things that I never travel without is noise cancelling headphones because uh, people drive me crazy. Noise drives me crazy. And especially if you're spending a lot of time in airports and things, then uh, noise cancelling headphones is, uh, is a must-have. Mm -hmm. What else do I always have? Uh, Earplugs, mm -hmm. similarly. I'm a noise person, right? So, uh, you know, there's a, uh, and I've spent a lot of time living in Asia recently. So uh, there's always noise. There's always roosters next door or somebody singing bad karaoke or something similar. So I guess all of my tips are travel light. You don't need much to be happy, but have headphones and earplugs. The bad karaoke could have been me. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you said there's not much you actually need to be happy, but I think. Every, uh, everyone needs every now and then a mentor. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's where time comes into play. Um, for you personally, when was the first time in your career or what age were you when you had your first mentor? I think uh, I've had amazing mentors all the way through my career, more informal mentors and uh, later on some more formal mentors. And I think that uh, the thing that people need to remember is that anybody can be a mentor. You don't actually even need to meet the mentor personally. You know, you can read about something. You can watch amazing videos online. You can, you know, subscribe to online courses. You can watch TED. You can watch uh, these podcasts. You can have mentors in a lot of different shapes and formats. And then, of course, you can have structured mentors as well. I think uh, the more structured part of my uh, development with mentoring or and coaching, actually, I studied to become a, an accredited business coach back uh, maybe 13, 14 years ago. And uh, as part of that process, I had a lot of mentors uh, in a formal sense who uh, guided me through my own personal development and my development as a coach. And that was really invaluable and kind of changed everything. That was 10 years ago, so it probably was your second job. Um, what was your very first job that you had? Uh, my very first job was um, in a nightclub, collecting uh, glasses, cleaning up smash bottles, cleaning out, you know, people's vomit and horrible job. It was uh, when I was really young, wanted to get into the hospitality industry. I'd started uh, studying hospitality management, and uh, I thought I better get a job. You know, I have to start at the bottom and work my way up. And thankfully, things went up 
pretty quickly and I didn't have to do uh, that horribleness in, uh, in a nightclub. It sounds like, though, you either ignored it or at that age you didn't care much about the noise, so you probably would have travelled without noise-cancelling headphones back at that time. Yeah, I was a little wilder in those days, and uh, things like that didn't bother me as much. Uh, things have changed as I've gotten older. Um, but my first real job was actually uh, working in luxury hotels, which is funny because that's kind of what I do now, well, in a different way, mm -hmm. and uh, working at the old Hyatt Regency in Adelaide. That's when I thought that I'd made it. I wasn't working in a nightclub anymore, and finally I was, you know, I had a, a real job in my mind, um, working in a beautiful luxury hotel, and that's where it all sort of began, and that was a great uh, a great entry level, a great uh, uh, learning experience, I guess, mm -hmm. when um, when you work in, in a luxury hotel like that, as you would know, um, because you get to learn a lot of the, the detail. And I think it's the detail that really matters a lot of the time. And how did you then transition into travel? So uh, I worked in hospitality for maybe the first five or six years of my career. Uh, that was when I was still based here in South Australia, where I grew up. And then I moved over to Melbourne and I was still working for Hyatt then. I was uh, soon after the Park Hyatt Melbourne had just opened and I went over there to work in the Park Hyatt. And then um, after that, after a while, I thought I'm done with working late nights and, you know, early mornings and, and all over the place. And I want a more regular job. And I started training as a travel advisor. And so that was back in 2001. Mm. See, now you're really going to be able to work out how old I am soon. You get for the audience and then a comment uh, under the podcast, what do you think his real age is? <laughs> Uh, so yes, that was when uh, that's when it all began, and I, I started as a travel agent and was very lucky to, you know, rise up pretty quickly in the ranks. I was working with STA Travel back in the day, and um, and soon got a job in head office as a product manager, mm -hmm. and then was lucky enough to go over to their global head office in London as a global market development manager, working with all of the different divisions of STA Travel globally. So it was a Again, another really great introduction into the travel industry and uh, getting to learn a lot very fast. And what is it that you that you love about travel? What, what ignites the passion? Uh, travel or the travel industry? The because travel there's industry. two different answers, yes, answers to that. The travel industry, uh, the people. Uh, that, that's also the answer for travel in some way uh, and shape and form as well. It's the people, right? Uh, we, we have a very... Uh, amazing industry with amazing people. And I think it's the, the connections that you make and, uh, and the opportunities that you get, I guess, getting to travel as well. But I think it's that um, it's the people that really make the difference. I had one brief stint outside of the travel industry since that time. I only lasted a year. Mm -hmm. And it was a bit of a, uh, uh, it was an eye opener because I realized that, wow, we're really lucky. I mean, the whole world doesn't work like this. Wow, you know, um, other industries and uh, and and the like are very different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget that. Certainly, if you've not worked in another industry, which I really hadn't, you know, travel, hospitality, they're very you know close. And so, having a, a stint outside of that, I went, wow, yeah, it's really uh, it's the people that make the difference. Mm -hmm. I, I fully agree. And the network, you know, and once you're in it, it is such an addictive thing in a positive way um yeah so i didn't know actually as a life outside of the travel bubble but okay good to hear <laughs> there is it's not very nice don't worry about it <laughs> not very nice of course not it's horrible it's horrible never be outside of travel absolutely no um would like to know you, you mentioned before yeah you, a mentor can be a tedx or a ted presentation it can be someone on youtube um a lot of people are inspired by by quotes is there like a quote that resonates very well with you There's, uh, there's a lot of them, but uh, you've put me on the spot now, isn't it? The one that I love is uh, nothing has meaning except the meaning that you give it. Mm. You want to elaborate you know, a little bit on that? Well, largely what you at attach meaning to, what you're passionate about, and everybody's passionate about different things for different reasons because of the meaning that they give to things. And I think it's, up, uh, it's for us to create meaning, not to... Uh, you can create your own meaning is what I guess uh, that means to me. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I like that actually. It's, it's, it's a very interesting um, one. And I think especially 
in times right now where you know we re you return to work it gets more busy and dynamics have picked up it's very easy to to attach a negative or frustrated meaning to things <clears throat> so um, yes. i really like that and i think the more you you are able to look at the bright side, side of things people in travel <laughs> mm -hmm. it's been a tough couple of years right and so i'm lucky enough to work with a lot of people i still do a lot of coaching and uh i've been lucky enough over the last 13 years to spend hundreds of hours inside people's minds and it's an incredible honor a gift uh, to be able to do that because you gain a deep understanding of what makes people tick but you also learn a lot about yourself and what makes you tick as well and meaning is what makes us tick I think. And you're very right that, you know, when times are tough, and certainly the last couple of years have been tough, right, for all of us in the travel industry, for the, for the world. It's not just us in the travel industry, but particularly in the travel industry, there's a lot of meaning that it gets associated with certain things, neuro associations, if you like. And uh, they can either really work for you and they can be positive or they can be really negative. So usually people that are suffering from a lot of depression or stress, which is, you know, a good portion of people these days, when you dig beneath the surface, that comes down to the meaning that they've attached to certain things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's fascinating. It's one of my, of my favorite quotes because it, yeah, it goes quite deep. It goes quite deep for sure. And you just briefly described what I also think is what happens with a mentee and a mentor, you know, that you go into their mind, you learn from them, but you also teach. Um, yes. Is that why you signed up to be a mentor at time? Absolutely. I get really buzzed, for want of a better word, <laughs> with uh, working with people in a mentoring sense or in a coaching sense. Uh, helping people to learn and to develop and grow. And I've been, I've been lucky enough to do that throughout most of my career. I've held a lot of uh, leadership positions um, in the travel industry where I've mentored uh, younger staff members to, uh, to grow up through the ranks and, um, and also more formal sort of mentoring through time and also through my coaching business. And it's, it's an amazing honor to be able to uh, assist people on that journey. At the end of the day, it's their journey. Mm. They have to do it themselves. But if you can be there to guide them and to support them and to see the results of that, it's hugely rewarding. Mm. Last but not least, Matt, um, why should someone coming to the travel industry join a structured mentoring program specifically within the travel industry? I think uh, the travel industry is going through immense change, right? So uh, there's, whenever there's huge amounts of change, there's also a huge amount of opportunity. So now is a perfect time for people, I think, to be uh, taking their skills to the next level. There's no better way of doing that than having a mentor. There's lots of different ways of doing that, of course, but having a mentor, somebody who's been there and done that or can share their, uh, you know, their learnings with you, can reflect uh, stuff back to you, um, can ask the right questions, because I think uh, a lot of my mentoring will be asking the right questions, because the more people can come to those answers themselves. That's not, sometimes, you know, it's about sharing your own experience and your own knowledge, absolutely. But other times, it's about helping people to realize the potential that they already have, that maybe they don't realize in themselves yet. Man, I think whoever will be your mentee will be in a very lucky position. Um, thank you so much for your time joining me from the Barossa Valley. You know, My absolute pleasure. Is everywhere. And I really appreciate your insights and that you share a little bit about you. And hopefully um, at some stage, you know, I also see in, uh, in, in Sydney or at one of the other networking functions that Time organizes. Fantastic. Thanks, Timu. Thank pleasure. Talk soon. Bye, Matt. Bye-bye.